Hey, what's up everybody? So, uh, it's coffee time, but I thought we would do a bit of a different video today. So this is more of a review video, a bit of a shootout. So White from White Tools uh, very kindly sent me uh, a torque wrench um, to look at, which is pretty cool. They've got quick quick swap out bits, so uh, that's really nice. And a few years ago, um, I think it's Baco, they're a Swedish company, uh, they sent me this uh, quick release screwdriver as well. It's not a torque wrench, uh, but it's the only thing that I've got that's somewhat comparable to the White Tools, and I thought that would be quite interesting to take a look at, uh, see some of the pros and cons of either one. Uh, both of them are 1000 volt rated, so great for sparkies, you know, electricians who are going to be working on uh, a bit of a high voltage stuff, you know, 240, maybe 340 or something like that. Um, your general purpose hobbyist uh, in electronics probably isn't going to need a 1000 volt, uh, volt rated thing, but uh, they come with a few nice things in the fact that they're a bit, bit clunky, a bit bigger. Um, you know, for, for a while I've been using these weir um, anti-static uh, or dissipative um, screwdrivers so I don't know if you guys can see that but it's kind of a nice uh, sort of slimline screwdriver which is okay uh, we're another German brand really good uh, but for a little bit more of the you know when you're working on stuff that's a bit bigger you really want a nice big screwdriver so I'm gonna go probably talk about the backhoe first uh, and then we'll get onto the torque wrench driver which I'm really interested in talking about all right everybody so here we've got the uh, backhoe screwdriver set uh, as you can see, it comes in this sort of roll-up Velcro case, which is quite nice. It's got the belt buckle, so you can, if you wish, put that through on your belt um, and have it on your hip if you want to. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, comes on like this. Everything's in these nice uh, sort of, you know, elasticated straps. Uh, this is the body of the screwdriver. So this one, of course, you can do... Um, Lefty loosey, righty tighty, or um, just have it in the middle there so that it's not ratcheted. So I quite like the ratchet feature on this. I think it's really useful. Uh, this is the quick release button. So you uh, you press this button down, that disengages the the latch, um, and yeah, you can take the tools out. So um, I think quite a few company now, quite a few companies now are doing this uh, quick release type of technology which is really good I really like it um, it makes changing bits super speedy I know you could just put down your, your uh, screwdriver and pick up another screwdriver but really um, I really like this uh, this type of technology so um, this here da, 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 is uh, probably their smallest flathead um, screwdriver that you can get or at least with the set that I got I think it's the smallest yeah. Yeah, that one might be slightly smaller, uh, but that's pretty much as small as they go. Uh, the mechanism is really nice and easy. I will uh, don't know if you can hear this, but it's a really nice uh, sort of click in, really solid. Um, yeah, and that's in there now. No amount of pulling on that gets that out. So this is in the sort of locked, locked mode, so I can turn that that way, and that would be for tightening something up. The ratchet sounds really solid. I've been using this on and off now for three years, and I haven't had any issues with it. Um, Yep, yeah, again that way. So now we've got um, going the other way. So this is loosening for things. And then, like I said, you just simply push this button, and the the bit comes out, which is really nice. So um, yeah, that goes in there. Got another one. This is the Phillips. Um, again, you can sort of see posi drive. Uh, so yeah, really nice. Yeah, that's actually a posi, posi drive. You can see there. Um, again, that just goes in there, nicely and easy. And that's not coming out of there. So yeah, I, I've not had any issues with the ratchet. It's not not skipped any clicks. Um, I've <clears throat> really sort of ratcheted things down, and, and um, yeah, nothing, nothing really comes off of that. You can see the handle's getting a bit worn now because of how much I've used it. Those are the regulations that it adheres to. Somebody probably knows what those mean. I do not. Um, VDE, no idea what that is. Probably some Sparky type thing. GS, I guess that's some some standard again. But yeah, 1000 volt rated, and you can tell, you know, that's a pretty beefy thing. And even the uh, the bits here, they've got some, I don't know if you guys can read that, something written on there about 100 volts. But yeah, really nice. So that's the backer. And then, what I'm quite interested in showing you is the white. So this is, like I said, port -right. So again, similar type of construction here with the, the Velcro. Um, 
this has the, the belt strap. The white does not, but to be honest, you're probably not going to want that on your belt. That's a bit annoying. Uh, but you can hang it up if you need to, which is quite good. Um, you probably hang it up like this, I would say. Uh, up on the wall like that. It comes with a little quick how-to guide. Uh, so it's short instructions in both um, German and English. So I think predominantly it's German on the back because the white is a German company. Um, yep, it's there. Bit drive talk, VDE. Not sure what that is. Um, I imagine it has something to do with whatever that VDE is. If I figure it out, I'll try and put like a little infographic there on the on the video. Uh, it also comes with now. This looks really nice. Um, which I haven't got, but maybe if I ask White nicely, they might send it me uh, a bit talk, uh, bit drive talk setting, which is really going to be useful for um, things like the oscilloscope that I'm repairing because they are all probably got a screwdriver somewhere. They're all talk. So for those of you who don't know, well, oh, and he's picked up a damn screwdriver. I've got, I've got two, I've got two screws on my desk, and 50/50 chance I picked the wrong one up. Uh, yes. So uh, yeah, this this is a talk. Um, I think that allows you, so a lot of the times you can even see with this screwdriver here, this 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 screw here, it's begin to get rounded because I probably used the wrong screwdriver or something, but it's, it's very common for screws to become rounded. Torx, you don't have that so much of an issue with that, which is why they're good for torquing things down. It's the name Torx, Torx screw. Those can go back there. But yeah, so you can get that from White as well. Uh, check out the website. Um, do they have their website on here? They certainly do. So it's uh, www.whitetools.com. Uh, they've got a nice uh, catalog on there. You can have a flick through. Um, probably some some diddly dars there. 360 degree engineering. No idea what that is. Uh, but this gives you a little bit of explanation about how to set the torque settings, which I shall go into now. So there's also the calibration certificate. So it doesn't come with a printed copy, which I actually quite like. I think that's nice that it doesn't come with a printed copy. Scan the QR code, get calibration certificate. Um, again, same idea, elasticated, um, elasticated strap there. We've got the humongous um, torque sort of handset here, um, made by White, obviously. This is a little bit loose on this end. I don't know what that's for. That's probably setting some calibration stuff up. I don't know. Uh, but the way that this works is, if I can get the right light, uh, you see that there's a very thin white line at the top. So this is currently set to approximately zero Newton meters, which is the way that you want to leave this. Um, you don't want to leave a torque, torque wrench set um, to, to a specific torque because I think what it does is it, um, it puts it under pressure for a long period of time and the calibration will slowly go out. So the way you set this is, is you lift this up and there is quite a distinct click. I don't know if you hear that already, which is quite nice, a nice solid click. And you twizzle this. So if I start twizzling this way, so you can see one, two, three, four, and what was that five? Oh, that was four, and then there would be five, yeah. So you can see that we've got that line is slowly sh shimmying down and down here. Down it goes, down it goes. So for example, if I wanted to set this to, I'll try and do it with the camera, it's not too easy. Uh, let's say I want to set this to, uh, I don't know, two, two and a half Newton meters. So I would go to up to two, uh, which is about there. It's quite difficult to get on the camera. So there's about two. And you can see that I've got the zero line. Oh, is that four? There we go. So there's two. Look, I've got the zero lined up. So it's 2.0 at the moment. And I can start turning this. So that there, if I drop that down, that would be 2.1. Lift that up. That would be 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and then back to the zero, that would be 2.5. I'd line that up with the arrow that you can just faintly see there. Um, it's a lot better in real life, by the way, I just difficult on the camera. Click that down, and that is now reading 2.5 um, Newton meters, you can see there, which is really handy. So what that, the way that this works is, again, same quick release uh, mechanism that we've got. Um, they all sort of use this hexagonal sort of entry thing. Again, we've got the thousand volt rated, the IEC compliance that it is. Uh, Posi head two times one hundred, whatever that means. It's the big one. So you would click that into here, 
nice like that. Uh, the, the only thing I'd say about this is it is very long. Um, what have we got here? So we got 15... Yeah, you're getting on for 32, 32 centimetres. That's, that's pretty long. Um, I don't know why they've done that. I imagine it's something to do with the talk, the, the, the talking technology that they have. They have to do it that way. But, um, again, the, the way that this one releases, this one releases actually really nicely as well. Um, so, again, that's not budging for no love nor money. You just pull this down and that easily slides out. So, uh, this is a really nice mechanism. Uh, again, another distinct click, which is really nice. I like that. Um, I'll set this to a lower torque setting and I'll show you how um, the torquing actually works. So that is zero again. Now what happens is, uh, let's say, imagine that I'm screwing in uh, a screw. So there's going to be an amount of resistance when I get up to, let's say, 2.5 torque and or 2.5 Newton meters, sorry. So you can see what it does is it, it starts to, to spin the handset, to, to spin the, um, the handle without actually turning the end. So I don't know how easy that is to see with a black, black background. Let's get rid of that. So I'm screwing in a screw, screwing in a screw, and then, you know, that bit's no longer screwing. So that's how it works. It just clicks over once it gets to the point. Um, but yeah, really nice. My only, only quibble is it is a bit longer than the Beko. So let's have a look. So that's the, uh, the white there, and then Baco. Let's put a similar bit in there. Quite a bit shorter. Um, let's get some actual measurement on there when I find my ruler that I've just chucked somewhere. Here it is. So the Baco is coming in at. So this is very approximate. So we're looking at about uh, 21 centimeters for the backo, and then yeah, it's about 11 centimeters longer for the um, for the white here. So a little bit longer, but you know maybe maybe that's a good thing. I I, I do have some pretty hefty screwdrivers, um, and they're quite nice for really driving in screws. So. Um, yeah, I've, I've been using the white. I, I really like it. I think it's a good um, good tool. I mean, if you're undoing, for example, you're not going to use a torque wrench on a tiny little screw like this. I mean, you probably could. Um, I'll use their smaller screwdriver here and give it a go. But again, they're, they're not... You don't really use them necessarily for undoing screws. But we can, we can give it a go. So, yeah, like, I mean, you, you're not going to use it for tiny screws. So this, this doesn't even fit in there. Uh, but then again, I don't think the backhoe does either. And, um, hang on a minute, I should use the wrong bit. Um, yeah, you, you, you're not going to use that for that. Um, right tool for the right job. If you're going to use that, then yeah, maybe maybe use the, the weir. Um, that's what this is designed for, you know. I bet that will have that out, no worries. Yeah. So, depending on what job you need, um, I think is, is a great a great tool. If I had to choose between the backhoe and the white, I would probably well again right tool for the right job. This this has got the torque setting stuff. I wouldn't use this really. I don't think on anything other than the stuff that I'm trying to torque down because I don't want to I don't want to wear out the the torque sort of mechanism in here and and lose off any of my calibration. But as as a tool, it's it's really nice um, and I would highly recommend it. The backhoe I think it's a bit on the lower end side of things. I'd have to check the prices out. Uh, but the white is, you know, German made, really solid, really nice bit of kit. Um, comes with a good case as well. Um, so yeah, if you need to get yourself a torque set, uh, a torque driver, which I highly recommend you do, then take a look at whitetools.co.uk. Nice one.